ratings on professionalwrestlingon.com and wwedivas.com. It's amazing, and I think she can really go the distance. She's someone who you can easily get uh, the next five or six years out of, as you can, someone like a Sasha Banks, a Tamina, and Naomi. Uh, it's just about how you create these divas and how you push them in the long run, and I'm hoping uh, that more divas than just these three we've seen from Team PCB, like divas from Team Bad and Team Bella, of course, uh, headlined by the successes of Sasha Banks and Brie and Nikki Bella. I think that we're going to be seeing more pushes. I'm hoping at least we're going to see more pushes of more divas to really catapult this the whole entire revolution if you would, in an entirely different direction, which is really what we need to see. Maybe there are people out there who feel that we're seeing a little bit too much of Team PCB, even though they aren't together anymore. I think WWE definitely have been considered to be overkilling. Uh, what Team PCB at one time represented, I really appreciated what they did. Uh, Team PCB definitely were the driving force behind this revolution to begin with, because they were the first group uh, to show up in the way of a faction, in the way of a Four Horsemen or a DX uh, for the Divas Revolution, and then from there we got Team Bad, of course, Sasha Banks, Naomi and Tamina, and then uh, Team Bella, the Bella Twins, and Alicia Fox, which was just a team, in my opinion, just thrown together, of course, because the Divas Champion at that time, Nikki, in the longest reign ever of Divas Champion in the history of the championship since its inception back in 2008, was a part of that group, and they needed some way of having the Bella Twins uh, stand out more, so they threw them together. Uh, with Alicia Fox, but not to say it can't go the distance, we just have to give it the benefit of the doubt and just keep believing uh, in the direction of the whole Divas Revolution, and I'm really excited to see where we go from here. It's definitely one of the top things to discuss amongst wrestling fans. I know conversation about this is blowing up throughout social media. If you pay attention to the posts on people's Facebook pages or their Twitters, they're either posting something on their Facebook walls or they're tweeting it on their respective Twitters. Really excited to see uh, where we go from here, and I am someone who is really excited to see what the future has in store for everyone who is a part of this Divas Revolution. Speaking of the future, I am really high and this new diva, Alexis Bliss, who was a professional bodybuilder and competed competitively before coming to WWE. If you've seen any of her work on NXT, you know who I'm talking about and you know what I'm talking about most importantly. She puts me in mind of a female Rey Mysterio. Just her style, her approach, her ring attire, everything about her character. Alexis Bliss is going to be a force to be reckoned with by the time she makes her debut from NXT to WWE. She's already competed for the NXT Women's Championship. She has a great character and a great gimmick, which is really easy and so fun. Uh, to get into. I'm hoping that she's going to come over from NXT as a fan favorite because I think that a lot of fans, more fans than are ever given credit for, are just as high on Alexis Bliss as they were in the earlier stages of Sasha Banks' career, which is why I'm really happy to see Alexis Bliss being pushed on NXT and hopefully there's more promise coming with her eventual WWE debut as there is for Bayley, uh, who is someone else who I am also really extremely happy to see on NXT and hoping that she's going to be getting a push really soon. Sarah Brookstone is another one too. Uh, or Anna Brookstone, really looking forward uh, to seeing what she's going to be doing as well. So there are a lot of divas with a lot of promise associated and affiliated with them coming over uh, from NXT eventually. Hopefully, by the way, by the time we get to the halfway point of 2016. But one of the more divas that I'm really excited for is Alexis Bliss. And again, if you don't know anything about Alexis Bliss, man, are you ever missing out on an incredible opportunity? Go to WWE.com, look up all the information, different pro wrestling news websites you can on Alexis Bliss. And a video on demand service, of course, Hulu or YouTube have a lot of footage of Alexis Bliss. I would recommend that you watch a lot of her matches from NXT to really get a better exemplification of what this young lady can do. She's so fast inside of the ring. She puts me in mind of how fast AJ was when she first started wrestling on Raw and SmackDown. She was a smaller diva against people like Michelle McCool and Layla, but she could really hold her own, and she was so fast and very quick and very agile in the ring, and that's what kind of Alexis Bliss re resembles to me, just someone who's really quick and really agile, and someone who can really hold her own after being a competitive bodybuilder for years. You would expect to see that uh, from Alexis Bliss. You'd see more of a power you would expect to see from Alexis Bliss, but you see both power and speed uh, coming from Alexis Bliss, which are qualities that are really going to get her over uh, in the deepest division, which is why I think there's so much promise, and she's never given enough credit for what she's done thus far on NXT. But again, go to YouTube, Vivo, YouTube, uh, Hulu, look up these videos of Alexis Bliss, and look up the info on Pro Wrestling News websites. You will not regret having done that, because then you will realize uh, how much promise she has, along with Bailey and so many others who have yet to make their WWE debuts, which comes with so much anticipation over the next couple of months. Now, how long do I see Charlotte being Divas champion? Long enough. Uh, 
to establish herself. I think the first reign of a Divas champion, any champion for that matter, uh, is extremely crucial and really critical because you really need to establish yourself as a champion and someone of the future, someone who's going to be there for a very long time. And that's what's really important about this first reign of Charlotte. She really needs to come a long way in establishing herself within the division because if she is able to do that, then she's going to be with WWE for the long haul, uh, which is what a lot of people obviously expect. Again, one of the faults of Charlotte that's always brought back is the fact that she is just the mirror image of her father and she's just resembling what David Flair was in World Championship Wrestling. I don't know what it is about Flair's kids, but it seems like Flair's kids are just failures and that's something that uh, is outstanding with people like Charlotte and David Flair and just the entire Flair family legacy uh, is how Flair's kids have always been failures and the only one really uh, who has achieved a great deal of success throughout their legendary career even back as far as the territories was Ric Flair. He always was uh, from the get-go achieving a lot of success but uh, that's more than what I can say for his children and for some reason that same kind of jinx is following Charlotte because in my opinion again you know she's way too original she's far more of a success story than what David Flair ever was because his brief stand in both WCW and WWE are stands that nobody uh, remembers and if they do remember the stands of David Flair they remember it for being just so disastrous completely fucking pointless so really uh, I think that more people are noticing Charlotte, and she's obviously more of a success than any of her other family members ever were in this business, with the exception of her father. But again, you know, falling back on the faults of Charlotte, one of the biggest things that I can't stand is the fact of how much she resembles her father and continuously is becoming more like her father uh, as the weeks go by. I would also really appreciate it if Ric Flair kept his nose out of the business of Charlotte, which means not to be involved in her matches as much as what she ha he has been. And I think the reason why is obviously because he feels that he has a lot of doubt uh, in the back of his mind about Charlotte, whether or not fans are paying attention to her. Here's the thing. Fans are paying attention to her, and they were paying attention to her long before before Flair himself uh, became involved in this storyline. Now, I know that Triple H and Stephanie obviously have a great deal to do with how Flair is involved in this storyline and his current role in WWE, but you're talking about a Hall of Famer who fought everyone from Sting to Shawn Michaels, and you're putting him out there with uh, his daughter, making him look like an idiot, and making him look like he's half senile. That's something you don't need to see. She doesn't need Ric Flair because it just seems like she's becoming more and more like her father as the weeks go by. Take him out of the storyline altogether and leave it up to people like Charlotte, Becky Lynch, and Paige to do what they're doing. Also, uh, something I'd like to see is have Paige included more uh, in the current storyline that we're seeing with Becky Lynch and Charlotte. Yes, I appreciate what Flair is doing, but let's throw Paige into the storyline without Paige has been referring to uh, Charlotte as Baby Flair way too much in these promos. She was doing it in the program when she was going one-on-one -on -one, uh, with Charlotte. Let's bring her into this angle with Charlotte and Becky Lynch and have the three Team PCB members tearing it up, referring to Charlotte once again as Baby Baby Flair. That would make perfect sense. Someone explain to me why we were not seeing Paige involved in this storyline. It was really frustrating to me, and I would say that it's really frustrating to a lot of wrestling fans out there, especially the Paige fans out there who are just as big of Paige fans as what I am. I know there are a lot of UK wrestling fans who are extremely proud and big fans a page, and I don't blame you for being a big fan of Page because initially, uh, from the get-go, I was a Page fan. Out of three T Team PCB members, uh, the one PCB member that I was a really big fan of was Page, and it was because of the talent she had. And then out of nowhere, they take her out of the program uh, with Page and Charlotte, and they put Becky Lynch in place of Page. And now Page is nowhere to be seen. If anything, uh, she's on editions of main event and the main event, or the first match even of main event shows, which are only an hour on the network, and that's completely stupid when you have so many divas, let alone Paige, who have so much talent who can be used far more useful uh, than what they are because they have a lot of potential and they know uh, they have a lot of potential. And you've got to believe they feel underutilized and undermined uh, by people like Charlotte who have definitely had an extended uh, reign as divas champion. And to be honest with you, with how Ric Flair has won 16 world titles previously in his career, I would have thought by now Charlotte would have been at least a two or three time divas champion and not still just having her first reign as divas champion. But again, that first reign is really critical and extremely crucial for whoever you're talking about from whatever division. Because that first reign, no matter how long it is, a month, two months, goes a long way in establishing your legacy for professional wrestling and it's what people remember you for. So she's really got to perform at her best and even if she doesn't get a second or a third reign, it will determine whether or not she gets a second or third reign. But even if if she doesn't, I think people are going to remember her as Flair's daughter who came in, 
probably for being way too original, uh, but she came in and definitely left an everlasting impression, which fans are not going to forget anytime soon. Woo, definitely for Charlotte, and I'm definitely really proud of everybody who's contributed to the push of Charlotte and just the entire Divas Revolution, uh, which has really taken off. And again, you're probably tired of hearing me talk about uh, this Divas Revolution, but who can blame me with how phenomenal uh, this Diva Re Divas Revolution is getting and continuing to get. Uh, in the coming weeks, this is going to be really interesting to see where we go from here after everything we have seen uh, in this Divas Revolution. In terms of a five-star scale perspective rating, you can easily rate it four out of five stars. I won't go all the way because, like everything, there are things that please you about a direction of a storyline, and there are things more times than enough that don't uh, please you about the direction of a storyline. But I think there are more things I'd be proud of and to talk about and to highlight uh, from this entire Divas Revolution, one of the biggest things is that Stephanie, in fact, has endorsed it along with her husband, Triple H. And any time that Stephanie endorses something you know, uh, there's got to be a lot of promise affiliated with it because it's very rarely, and it's very rarely that you hear me, uh, it's very rarely that Stephanie endorses anything, but it's also very rarely that you hear me give Stephanie credit for having done anything or doing anything intelligent. And this, by far, has to be one of the more intelligent things that we've seen Stephanie do in a really long time because for a while, for years really, she was just the second person or the third wheel uh, in everything the McMahons would do. She'd just kind of come out there and stand there just to say, hey, I'm here. Uh, she'd never really make a huge announcement or do anything worth talking about. And this really has to be something that will define Stephanie for a really long time. Because before Stephanie did this, the Divas division had nothing going for it. You just go to .com and you read about a Divas match and you say, okay, well, the Divas championship is just being defended on pay-per-view or Raw or SmackDown just for the sake of having it be defended. But you're actually interested now in the outcome of Divas championship matches. You're wondering who the number one contender is. You're wondering who the champion is who emerged victorious at pay-per-views for pay-per-view title matches between Divas. I mean, it's amazing. So let's get three ways and fatal four ways going uh, for Charlotte if we're supposed to be recreating an AJ Lee. Let's see her defend that champion. Championship, not just in singles matches, but in triple threat matches, fatal four matches, matches that put her in precarious positions. And let's see if she can handle the pressure of being Divas Champion, because there's a lot of pressure with being Divas Champion that comes with being WWE or Intercontinental Champion in the past. We're seeing that same kind of pressure coming over from other divisions to this Divas Championship and this division. And even more so now that we're promoting this Divas Revolution and will continue to do so as it becomes the focal point of WWE, one of the biggest primordial focal points of 2016. 2016 is going to be a really big year for the Divas Revolution and the entire Divas division in WWE. Upcoming debuts, upcoming title matches on pay-per-view, pushes, everything, creative storylines that could be far more creative than what they are. Don't get me wrong, or don't take anything out of context I've said about this entire Divas Revolution because they still